Hi everyone. I hope there's someone there. I mean, it's bank holiday and it's very nice weather, so you all might be outside enjoying the sun. But hopefully there's a few people watching. So it's I think it's my eighth or ninth art class. Oh, Paul Waynes is there from Hull. Lovely. So put your names up and that because I love to know who's watching. So you got day off from work today, Paul. That must be nice for you. Um so today's model is Wayne Shires, who is probably about 200 yards from here in his house. And as I said, an isolation station's around the corner, so we're very near to each other. Oh, hi, Jill Pay. How are you? All the way from Primrose Hill. Julia from Mercy Island, Essex. Sounds nice. Don't know where it is. Anyone else? Sophie just said, oh, hi, Jennifer Corker. You're going to do some embroidery. Oh, Rosanna. Hi. Oh, everyone loved you so much last week. People I know were crying. They loved it so much. Oh, Ian Jeffries, all the way from New York. Fantastic. Corking Island. Oh, we're very international today. Sue Booth from Finsbury Park. Oh, Kirsty and John are doing it as well. Oh, how lovely. Lovely. And Donald. Oh, everyone's on today. Oh, hi, Tara. Is that how you say your name? But I do love your drawings. Hi, Dina. You and John, I expect you're both there. He's been busy in his garden and swimming. I've seen. Oh, fantastic. Right then. Oh, Jennifer, do you like my flowers? My friend, um, Karen, no, Kim. I don't know if she's watching. She bought them for me from Marks and Spencer's. Very nice. And they smell gorgeous. So anyway, you're not going to draw me. You're going to draw my old friend, Wayne Shires. I've known for many, many years. Hi, Leslie Brown. So let's reveal him. Let's reveal Wayne. Oh, hi, Magic. Paul and Magic are watching. Hi. Hi, Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi, Sue. Hello. I feel like I haven't seen you for ages, Sue. <laughs> I know. It's been such a long time. Uh -huh. Yesterday afternoon. But I know. In the front garden. Being very good. Two metres apart. Hi, Pauline Gibb. I don't know. So, anyway, then, because if you want to start drawing, please do. As usual, Wayne's going to stay in that position. He's got a little dog somewhere. It's about an hour, Ian. But you can, Ian, you can. Hi, it. Ian. Hi, Ian. You, you can't do, see the dog. I can't see you if you wave, sadly. But you can do. Hi, Ian. Hi, Donald. Let me just tell about art. So you can draw lots of little drawings, one big drawing, a painting, or whatever you want. And don't worry about not having materials because people use all kinds of stuff lipstick, ketchup collage i mean paul wayne's from hull he always does it on his computer they always turn out fantastic so whatever you've got you can draw on and don't feel bad and remember when you finish to send them to isolation station hastings then we'll show a few at the end then afterwards we have a great big exhibition on facebook oh can't you hear me either david sands you're Shall quite quiet too project project, project susan project. Project. I'll project my voice like i'm an actress Right, Wayne, let's talk about where we can... Everyone hear me now? Yes. Because I was... This is my iPad and it has been quiet. And I was going to do it on my phone, but I couldn't see it because it was so small. So, Wayne, when did we Sue. first meet? Where did we first meet? Yeah. I think we met at yours, at your flat. I think Vaughan brought me to your flat. Yeah. I think well, that's where we first met. He mm -hmm. wasn't my lodger then, though, was he? No, 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 no. Years before. Years yeah, and I, years before. Because I met Wayne when he was going out with my old flatmate, Vaughn Toulouse, mm. who sadly died several years ago. Well, about A long 30, time ago. Almost 30 years ago. Is it really? Yeah, well. Gosh, gosh. What was his past? Um, yeah, no, I, I went to your flat, didn't I? Well, everyone used to go to your flat. Your flat was the hub of... of of Could, like pre parties and post parties and midweek parties and and I went to work. Can you I don't know. I was going to say I don't know how you kept down a nine to five like civil servant job. They were like Can you put your hands back. If I had a request. Someone wants to draw your hand. My hand. Yeah. So leave it there. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Bit up. It's like isn't. It? Yeah. There we go. Looks a bit limp. Wants to draw your hand. 
The model is round the corner to me in St. Leonard's. Probably I could walk there in five minutes if I wasn't so lazy. Oh, hi, Anthony from Worthing. Anthony always does nice pictures because he designs bank. Sorry, I won't move Put again. Your, your hands back for Ian Jeffries. Sorry, sorry. Oh, it's not me, it's cross, it's Ian. All the way from America. I must have got up early. Hi, Ian. How you doing? One of one of Wayne's old fellas. <laughs> not that there aren't many of them. They're all dead, Sue. Few, yeah. Ian's not dead though. No, no. Um what else? So we met in my flat in Mornton Crescent. We did. And then I saw you, then I didn't see you. I bumped into you. And then, you st what did you, were you doing when I first met you? Um, what was I doing? I, um, I was working in, well, when I was going out with Vaughan, I was working in fashion. I was working in a, um, I was working in a fashion uh, manufacturer on Cleveland Street. In Soho, oh. I was a cutter. I used to oh. cut the fabric out. They used to make clothes for Barbara Hulaniki. Not not when she was Bieber, but after. Yeah. I used to work, and the the the, warehouse, the warehouse that I worked in was where Kate and Jeremy had a, a loft apartment upstairs when they had. Well, Hazy Fantasy, you mean? Yeah, yeah. So I worked there. I worked in the fashion, in the garment industry, and then kind of went into the fashion business, worked for Stephen Linnard and James Regurfo and, and that. And then, um, yeah, then went into styling and all that stuff. But that's when we first met around then. Yeah, what sort of styling did you do? I did lots of styling in the 80s. I did uh, ID magazine. I worked with Karen Franklin and, and Stephen Linnard and yeah. Did lots of, yeah, lots of, of those Blitz magazine, ID magazine stuff and pop stars and stuff. Oh, yeah. I used to love the days when we had those pop magazines and we all read them. It was, when the day it came out, it was all exciting, wasn't it? And, mm, went mm. and if there was a picture of you in ID, it was the best thing ever. No, totally. But no, it was great. It was exciting, exciting days and, and yeah. And, so uh, how did you decide to hit the nightclub scene? From fashion? Yeah. Um, so I was working for Siegel Linnard in, um, we, he had a studio in a building in Greenland Street in Camden. Yeah. Where um, there were lots of other people there, like John Galliano was there, John Flett, Richard Estelle, um, Vivian Westwood, um, and Patrick Lilly um, had a PR company there uh, called Victory PR. And I got asked to do the door of a, a warehouse party in Camden. This is before like, like acid house days it was in the sort of mid 80s and um have a little warehouse party it was in that building opposite greenland street it was in yeah. Yeah, like a like a community hall thing and i did the door and i've been working in fashion and styling for years and i did the door and um, i saw the money that, 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 that they took on the door of running a club and i was like uh this is for me <laughs> so yeah so i started doing little clubs i did a club at um a place called clink street in london bridge i did a little underground where like gay party there called spunk um i think julia's dj at every single one of my clubs pretty much she said yeah. that the other day actually um and i think luke dj at that, that or maybe jeffrey i can't remember jeffrey hinton yeah. luke howard um and that just progressed into then i got a job at the wag club yeah. Where you worked. I did. And where Louise Neal worked. We and all Julia worked. worked. We all worked there. And I worked with the lovely Maxine in the offices in the daytime. Oh, did you work in the offices at the WAG as well? Yeah, yeah. I worked in the upstairs with Tommy and Abby. And, and um, yeah, so I, started, I worked with them at the WAG. And then they um, gave me what was Prohibition at the time, you remember? Yeah. the nightclub on Hanover Street for me to turn into my own creation. And um, that's when we opened Bar Industria, and that was the first one. Oh, the night size. You worked on the door. Oh, God. I can't you know when you're not really drunk and you're just working, and I just get stuck with really drunk people just telling me all their life stories. Yeah, because you had the worst job. You would just sat on the door and everyone used to, like, come out and chat to you. 
I know, and most of them are really boring. I mean, some are interesting, some are good fun. But one it's of good my club. Friends, it only lasted a year, if you remember. Yeah, Pete Burns when he came down, and I yeah, and um, do was just stare at his face because I couldn't really comprehend anything. <laughs> else. We had some. No, that it lasted a year. That club, and um, in fact, Tony did um, ABBA on a Tuesday. That that yeah. like retro night. Lots of celebrities went there. George Michael, Banana Rama. Boy George. Boy George. And then we did um, Superstar Nightclub on Fridays with Rachel Auburn and Martin Confusion. Yeah. And yeah, it was good. Only lasted a year. And then then I moved on to Substation. Yeah. We'll have a drink, sorry. Oh, yeah. What happened at Substation? Where was that? Substation was, um, the first one was... Um, it was a club that was Stallions. It was behind the Astoria on Charing Cross Road. Yeah. Yeah. So moved there. Was there for many years and then opened the one in Brixton. Yeah. Yeah. Afternoon, Una. Oh, someone had forgotten about oh, Bar. forgotten about Bar Industry. I oh, know. It's funny. I work there. Oh, Jill likes your show. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and oh, and I got stuck with the bouncers there as well, telling me all their boring stories <laughs> and all their romances. Oh, it was tiresome. Especially, you know, that one Les. Did you have a relationship with a lot of the bouncers? I think the word relationship when you spread a bit far. I think it might be a less than a relationship, but not yeah. really from industria. More the way. No, more the way. At a high level. <laughs> mm. um, oh, God, we had to sit with Abby. Now, what else? So you had that, then you had mm -hmm. the substation. Substation. And then, oh, Je Ian Jeffries was like some stories about substation Soho. Substation Soho. Stories of substation Soho. Um, oh, gosh, there's lots. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it was great. We were, it was, we were kind of like, it, I was very New York inspired. So it was very, when every, everything else was like a, a, a pub or a bar in Soho, substation used to carry on till five six in the morning so it used to get very messy there and and um yeah but then we moved, when we moved to dean street um we had that kind of back room at dean street which was very kind of i'm not going to go into details or Best but anyway it was very studio 54 back room that would get lots of celebrities in there and um, yeah letting their hair down so to speak oh stallions yeah it used Where's to have Stallions was, was where Substation was. It was it was behind the Astoria in Falconberg Court, the little alleyway that went behind the Astoria. It had Is fish tanks in it and a light up dance floor. Where was the Mug Club? Mug Club was in originally was in um, Leicester Square, and then I think it moved to Busby's. I think, but it was yeah. it was in um, uh, the club was called uh, Subway, which was oh, a gay right. club. Yeah, because I forget now where everything was and I get confused because they yeah. passed by a lot of hours. It's a long time ago, a long, long time ago. I know. And did Stallions have... Stallions did have fish tanks, it did, on the bar, in like columns at the end of the bar. Very, oh, very sad fish, very sad. Oh, here's a nice question. Who is the most interesting person you've ever met and why? Most interesting person I've ever met, and why? Gosh, um, me? No. <laughs> you? <laughs> um, 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 I've got to think. I've got to think. Most interesting person I've ever met, and why? Um, probably Yoko Ono, actually. Yeah. She was just such a, like she was so. Um, she. I only met her through Murray Chalmers, who. Uh, Yoko Ono had re released some dance music in the um, in the early 80s and she did a PA at, at, at Crash, a club I had in Vauxhall. And um, yeah, and she was just, I mean, obviously she was Yoko Ono, so I was, you know, yeah. totally in awe, you know, married to a Beatle and all her art stuff and everything. And um, she was just amazing, just such an amazing, yeah, she was just, yeah, I'm, uh, Julia came to the club that night and me and Julia were hanging out with her and she was just, yeah, just incredibly humble and sweet and really interested in the club and yeah. she did her performance and she threw the microphone down on the floor and 
came backstage and I was like, shit, she didn't like it at all. And she was like, oh, that was amazing. It's a very good impression of her. Okay, I, I'm about, we're easily um, thrilled. Huh? We're easily thrilled by celebrity, aren't we? Yeah. I remember we were going to a club just when the Osbournes started to be on the telly. <laughs> and we saw Kelly Osbourne. We were so excited. We were bowing to the floor. <clears throat> so that's how excited we get over a minor celebrity. So how did the Vauxhall years start with all those great big super clubs you had there? Oh, yeah. Um, well, basically, um, we had substation in Soho and... Um, we had a substation in Brixton and we were getting a lot of trouble from the police um, back then. Um, the police didn't really like kind of shirts off gay clubs. You know, we used to get visits and stuff. And um, and I knew that, you know, there was a, the club, the fridge in Brixton and they never got, um, you know, any kind of trouble because they were in Brixton and there was a lot more to worry about in Brixton than, a few gay guys with their shirts off. Um, so the West End sort of lost its, in, I, I lost interest in the West End. So, um, yeah, so I was, yeah, just, uh, I'd, I'd gone to the club, what well, it was in the club, it was a, a youth club in Vauxhall and um, it just became available. And um, yeah, so I took it over and, and I liked the proximity that it was to close to the West End, but not in the West End. And there was all, always, uh, there was already like, like the um, RVT and the Market Tavern and things like that. So it was already a, like a hub for gays. So it just made sense to open a big club yeah. there. So and I was thinking yeah. your favourite bit of opening the club is the designing of the club. Yes, it is. My How favourite. How much did you enjoy that? Huh? How much Sorry? did you enjoy that? How you much did you think... enjoy doing it? That's my favourite bit, yeah. My favourite bit is creating. I've always loved getting a space, you know, seeing how we can make it work and, you know, and doing it up on a shoestring and, you know, just being creative and yeah, that's my favorite bit. And then seeing it work and, and running it, but then I get kind of a little bit bored and want to do something else. I've always been like that. So you're very keen on the industrial look, weren't you? And parachute. Um, <laughs> it's cheap. <laughs> yeah. And that other camouflage netting. was Camouflage popular. netting. Popular. Yeah. But it's cheap. Yeah. Corrugated well, iron, scaffold yeah. poles. Yeah, that's a question from Donald. Yeah, stallions. That was before me, the tea dance on a Sunday. Yeah. What? And you built that whole set for her. For who? I remember, I remember though, when I came to Crash and I first saw Johnny Wu performing and you'd made that whole stage that you could jump out of. <laughs> and I was so impressed. I thought, blimey, it's like a proper magic trick. That was a good, yeah, that was good. I like that. Well, we made that room that was a whole cabaret room. We, we, yeah. we, it was dedicated for, for like cabaret performers and stuff. So, hmm. Yeah. Good club, that one. What, Crash? Well, Area, that was on yeah. after. When did I have my 50th birthday? Was that Area? Area. See, they all get muddled up in my head. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yes, we did, Julia. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but Julia was there. You were there, Julia, on the on the um, the night of Yoko Ono. But yeah, what the top celebrities performed at Crash and Area and all your other clubs. Um, well, across across the board, oh loads. Um, so Yoko started with Yoko. The Scissor Sisters performed at Crash. Um, Siobhan Farr, he performed at Crash. Mark Ullman performed at Crash. Um, uh, uh, um, let me think, Pete Burns, um, gosh, 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 yeah, that's enough, isn't it? I can't remember anymore. I'm right. really not good at remembering things. Question from Rosanna. It, it, yeah, it was, it was, um, like, especially, like I said, in the West End, you, there, there used to be, I don't know if there still is, there was a, a police division based in Westminster called the Club Squad. Sounded like kind of something really old fashioned. And they they would literally drop by like unannounced and, and just, you know, just, you know, break you over the coals for anything. Um, I um, I actually once was arrested. Um, Why? You find that hard to believe. So I was running substation uh, on a Friday night. And it was all obviously very full of hot, sweaty gay guys with their shirts off and stuff. 
and there was a narrow corridor that went past the toilets and went back to the bar and um when the police used to arrive there'd be like four of them and um they would just want to be shown around the club so security i said to security let's show them around the club so as we were walking through the corridor we got to the end of the corridor and uh, a guy dropped to his knees and started pleasuring another guy shall we say <laughs> in the corridor and i was standing kind of near it near, yeah. near the app near the, the happening and um the police were standing just there and i smacked the guy on the back of the head and told the security to throw them out and uh and yeah we carried on walking through the club and got to the door and i sort of you know said you know was pre prepared to say my goodbyes and they went mr shires you're not obliged to say anything anything you do say will be and i was arrested there on the spot for running a disorderly house and i was taken to bow street magistrate court i was arrested i was locked up i was released at like seven eight in the morning the following day and i had to appear in court and what happened then well, basically, my my business partner slash boss owned the Astoria, yeah. a guy called Brian Mason, and he hated the police. He hated the whole thing that they would give all the clubs and pubs in the West End grief. Yeah. Um, and he hired a really top barrister. And when the um, when the statements from the police came out, he looked at them. And basically, when we went to Bow Street Magistrates Court on the day for the for the hearing he did gaffer tape on the floor and made yeah. us all stand in the positions we were at in yeah. the in when the incident happened and the two police behind me um he made someone stand where the the action the the, the blow yeah. job took place and he said to the two people police behind me can you see that person's face and they went no and he went but in your statement you did you said you saw the penis go in the man's mouth so it all got thrown out of court sorry good watching sorry they everyone's seen more modern these days they know exactly. still, don't know mm. not like when we were young i didn't know any i didn't know anyone gay was till i was 16 i didn't know it existed so anyway answer to that lady's question yeah it, it was really tricky we got we got um raided a few times and after that after that court case uh, after we won that court case we got lots of grief um, and hence my kind of moving out of the West End and moving to Lambeth, which was a lot, a lot easier. And um, and obviously over the years, you know, and how big gay pride got and stuff and in London. So, yeah, it became a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. And. Oh, look. Oh, Ian. hi, Ian. How are you? How's Scylla? Oh. Hi, Trindy. Oh. Julia loved it. She loved everything. When are you moving here, Trindy? Because Jimmy was another friend of ours, he wants to move here. The whole town. We've got a lot, lot of friends here. Friends. Pardon? We have lots of friends here. I know, it's lovely. It's the right. 80s, I see. Let's go on now to your big festivals that you ran, the um, yeah. Summer Rights. Did you I work did, with Gay yeah. Pride first? Well, I worked, on, I worked with, on Gay Pride um, for about seven years in London when we were, when it, when it, it was um it started in kennington well it, it started in spring gardens went on to kennington park but i kind of got involved when it was in brockwell park and um yeah there were amazing years and it did uh, phenomenally well under this uh directorship of a guy called teddy witherington and kim lucas and yeah that was brilliant and i worked on that for years but it got so big i think at one point we were in clapham common and there was two hundred and fifty thousand people and like Kylie performed, I think the Pet Shop Boys performed at that one. I can't remember. I was busy in a golf cart, but um, it got so big that I I wanted to to do a festival that was smaller and more London centric and more yeah. yeah. So that's how Summer Right started in Brockwell Park. In and how much work was that? It was huh? always out of work. The amount of people you have to deal with. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, but I think because we, we both me and Kim had um, sort of done all the, the groundwork with with working on Pride to, to do our own festival. It was it was kind of not easy, but it was. Yeah, it was. We knew all the all the the trappings of it. So but it was fun. It's a good, it's a, you know, but it's a nightmare because they're so 
weather dependent and stuff and you know it rained a couple of times and you know there's a famous statement i think someone from love box festival said uh you know you put a festival on, it rains and someone loses a house which i think is quite funny oh. Yeah, at one point you were called Rain Showers. Rain Shires, yes, yes. Because rain Showers. Rain Showers, Rain Shires, Rain Showers, because, yeah, because we did two two summer rights and it rained on both, so, yeah. I know, it used to be so enjoyable, though, because you sort of knew everyone you knew there and it was nice, mm. nice bands on and that. And you always bumped Yeah, no, we had some brilliant bands. We had Susie and Budgie, the Creatures, and Jimmy Somerville and Mark Armand and Lady Bunny and... Yeah, loads of loads of yeah. They were good. they were fun days, really fun days. Um, I was I was having a, a social distance dog walk with Donald, and Donald's got lots of uh, backstage footage, oh, so yeah. he's going to convert them. I haven't got any. I've got some main stage footage I want to convert, but um, Donald's got some backstage footage with with all of us. I think so. That would be interesting. Because we didn't have mobile phones in them days, so it never no, no, no. But Donald, Donald always had a a video camera very early on because he used to, he used to, um, to, you know, he used to tour with people, didn't he? So he was always filming. Yeah. At stage. Yes. Oh, great to hear this history. And Jimmy says he was called Jimmy Flops. Oh. What? I never knew you were called Jimmy Flops, Jimmy. Did Jimmy you Flops. I don't, I don't remember know. that. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. You won't Thank be Jimmy a long time. What else? Well, so what else? What about, we said that you went out with Vaughan. Mm -hmm. Another time you got arrested after his funeral, wasn't it? I did. <laughs> yes. Should we just Rest go through how many times I've been arrested? Yeah, at the WAG Club. Mm. Outside the WAG Club. For stealing a glass yeah so yeah we've been to Vaughan's funeral and then there was a very uh, awake at the wag club with everyone there and we all got very drunk and it was very sad but uplifting and yes and i left with a, a glass of prosecco or glass of whatever in my hand i was with john Derry at the time and the police came over and said where did that glass come from and i went there um and they arrested me for theft they can't have had much to do, can they? Really? No, no. And I appeared in court the next day in the same suit. But I walked to the funeral. How many times have you been arrested, Wayne? <laughs> um, five. Oh, not bad. I've never been. Oh, I think I've been arrested once. Mm. That's it. Oh, a bit jealous. <laughs> Did you enjoy, like what with Julia on here talking about her terrible crime of the bun stealing? He oh yeah, know a load of old criminals. Oh, I stole potatoes. No, were you arrested for that? Yeah, Where well, I, well, yeah, no. Um, I went to Bournemouth for a bank holiday weekend thing, um, <laughs> and um, I was sleeping in a car, yeah, and in the you... middle of the night, I woke up and I wanted a wee. So I peed outside the car and then I noticed there was a hotel. Yeah. And the back of the hotel doors were open. So I decided I was going to go in there and I went into a kitchen and made myself a sandwich because <laughs> I was so drunk. Yeah. And made myself a sandwich. But apparently one of the like nighttime porter chefy people had spotted me making a sandwich. And, um, what sort of sandwich was it? If you don't mind. I don't remember. Mm. cheese i think it involved cheese yeah um and um and when i left uh he, he obviously i think he was too scared to come in the kitchen when he saw me and um and when i was leaving the kitchen i spotted a bag of potatoes and i decided to take them and put them in the boot of the car and then went back to sleep and i'm sure there were people watching this who were actually in the car who will remain nameless and um and then suddenly the the car was surrounded by police and torches and oh. I was arrested for stealing a bag of potatoes. Wayne, do you want to hold up your dog? Seeing you're so busy stroking it, people might want to see him. Oh, uh, I'm just trying to keep him quiet. Trying to keep him quiet. Let's see. Oh, it's Pip. Sorry, I'll get <sighs> The other one's there, but she's over there. 
Yeah. Sorry, I'm a bit <laughs> joking. I'm just I'm trying to keep you moving your hands up and down. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right, what else can we talk about now? Well, okay, can we move on from me being arrested? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know I like I'm obsessed. I, I don't like being in trouble <laughs> myself, but I oh, like dear. other people's misfortunes. <laughs> oh, oh no. hello Debbie. Oh, she's regular in your pub. I know. Yeah. Um what else? Now, should we talk about our time in Hastings then? Yeah. So why did you decide to come to this lovely town? Um well I I've been here because I I uh, I bought a place with with our friend Paul, as you know, yeah. in a place called Canva Sands, um, a little holiday home. And um I came over here a few times on the train from from Rye and um I really liked it I don't know I like the energy this is this is years and years ago and um I like the energy and stuff and then um a good friend of ours Lawrence Malice from trade he moved he bought a house here about I think about probably about 11 years ago now 12 years ago and um and I don't know it just sort of got on my radar and and then Tiff who, who I knew from club days in London. So there was people sort of moving here that was sort of, yeah, so it was on my radar. And then a, a few friends, good friends of ours moved here. Um, and I was, yeah, and, and I was kind of, I'd, I'd been living in Shoreditch for about 12 years and, and I was kind of over living so central in London and wanted to move. And when, when I'd moved away, it must have been horrible. Yeah, well, yeah. I did only use them about five bus stops from Wayne. I know, I know. It was lovely having you up the road in 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 Shoreditch in Bethnal Green. But um I just got over living in in London. It was, you know, forty five minutes to get anywhere and I know. And I wanted, you know, uh, with Adam, my partner and the dogs, we just wanted a garden, wanted a bit more space and wanted to be, um, and, and we looked at places in London and there was nowhere in London that we could afford. And and I think sort of growing up in London pretty much, you, you know, unless you can live in the places you really want to live, you won't compromise. I think if you're not from London and you live there, you, you'll compromise. But if you're from there, you're like, no, I want, to live there and if you can't afford there then so um yeah and then you moved here and yeah so um i persuaded adam my other half uh took quite a while <laughs> he, <laughs> he he says i tricked him but anyway um Never yeah do that to anyone <laughs> so yeah so um yeah i can't even remember the, your question yeah so uh why did i just wanted to change the scenery and I love I love being by the sea and stuff yeah. so I know I got to the point I think it was one day in particular I wanted to go at the west end I'd planned my journey it was involving a bus and a tube and everything was broken nothing worked mm -hmm. and it took me about three hours to get to Tottenham Court Road and I just thought this isn't the life I want no is that I mean literally I was living in Shoreditch and had a club in Vauxhall and that would take like 45 minutes to get to. And, you know, even a cab, if you wanted to get a cab, it was like 20 quid in an Uber anywhere. And, and just, yeah, I just got, yeah. So we took the plunge anyway, as you know. So, um, Boys. But, but I love it. I love it. I know you love it. I love it. You know, and it, it, I love, I love the fact that there are old friends here who I see more of people here than I did in London, so. I know. I told you why, because especially now, let's talk about your venture down here that oh, changed yeah. everything when you bought the fountain. Sorry, when I when got you the fountain. Got the fountain. Um, yeah, so. So we moved here and it was, it was kind of a bit of a, a lifestyle change. I was giving up uh, running clubs and stuff. Um, um, wasn't sure what I was going to do. Uh, there was talk of a, a shop uh, with with my other half. And, um, and yeah, so we moved here and, and I mentioned a pub to Adam that I would like a pub and he was quite against that. And... Um, 
But then when we were here for a few months, he um, he thought it was he thought I could do a good job yeah. with a pub here. So once once I got his blessing, I um, I looked for one and yeah, found the fountain. <gasps> what was it? How many did you look at before you found the fountain? No, that was the first one. That was the only <laughs> one. That was the only one. I think it's the only one available, actually. Yeah. Sorry. And it's um, well though, isn't it? Sorry? It's worked out well. It did, yes. Is there any more questions from anyone? Because I love a question. I know. Ask questions. Yeah, just random questions. They are. Um, which I, so I used to run a club called East Block in Shoreditch. Ran that for nearly 10 years. Um, but if I went out, I used to go to the Georgian Dragon, where I used to DJ and where Sue DJed. Um, the Joiners. Um, where else? Showed it. Um, where did we go? I can't remember. The Albion for lunch. The Albion for lunch at the Welland Bucket. But years ago, I mean, when we were, uh, uh, where did this go? Oh, um, Pony Step at um, the Hoxton Bar and Grill. Um, yeah. Mainly the Georgian Dragon. Oh. Uh, I know, we miss the fountain. That's Joanne. You used to come to the art class with husband. Oh, it. thank you, Debbie. See? No, question. Oh. Are you planning to expand? We are. We are. Thank well, the the whole um, lockdown thing kind of scuppered our plans. But um, we obviously, we had the fountain for a year with um, uh, Shepherd Neem, a brewery. And um, we did quite well. So they offered us another pub, which is in Bex Hill, which is 20 minutes in in the car, 10 minutes on the train. So we were due to open that um, at Easter. So, yeah. But, yeah, whenever we can open it, we will. And what are your plans for that pub? Because obviously Bex Hill is quite different to Hastings. Um, I don't, yeah, it, it, it is. But I think Bex Hill is ready for a, a fountain type venue, I think. Um, yeah, we might have to scale back some of the entertainment. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a it's a lovely pub. It's right right by the sea, and yeah, it's right by the station, isn't it? So it's handy. It's right by the station, right by the beach. Yeah, I'm excited, it's really excited. So I might sneeze. Sorry, I'm sitting too near the flowers. Ah. Did you know the other club in Manor Park? It's Manor Park. I knew Manor one Park. Manor Park. Can't Which think. Club? Which club? The other club. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. No. It asks, if anyone wants to ask silly random questions, please do. There's nothing. Yeah, ask me random questions. Now, Wayne, in the background, if you can't see it properly, is something from our favourite ever shop, French Depot. Oh. You've got yeah. one of those glass domes haven't you but sadly the yeah, lights yeah you can't really see it though can you because it's the That's reflection you've still it. got some see. if French anyone Depot. wants to oh hi leslie amazing <laughs> we're gonna be do you leslie do you know uh the sovereign on c road if you do that's where we're opening up it's exciting wait for her answer um no the the dome is uh yep from our favorite shop french depot yeah it's another good reason to uh, i could list so many Darren from french depot yeah. sideboards from french depot yeah <laughs> the dogs Everything from french depot yeah he's got, he has got some available still he's got a fantastic the religious... oh, another one where'd you get your shirt um no uh 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 I think I got it from a vintage shop on um, George Street. Oh, what, in Hastings? I look huge in this position. Oh, hang on. This is a good question from Kevin. Apart from oh. partner, and obviously Hi, partner, how are you? It's a, a fountain regular. Oh, uh, yeah. Apart from your partner and obviously your dogs, what would I save in a fire? Um, 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 um. I don't know. Weird. Um, um, really trying to think. I don't. I don't really. You're a great one for getting rid of your possessions, anyway, aren't you? 
Yeah, I'm always, I'm yeah, always I'm kind of letting go because I used to. I think, I think I've only realised since moving here that I'm actually quite a hoarder. I never realised that over the years, and and um, and I haven't even brought all the stuff that I brought from London to the to the flat. It's all in the pub in boxes, and and um, uh, so yeah, um, I try and let go of things now. I try and yeah, just keep. The essential things. What would I? I think. Okay, it's not here on view, but I have. Um, I have a Seditionaries Cowboys T-shirt vest thing in a, a gold frame, and I. That's kind of one of my favourite things. So, I think I'd go for that. Yeah. First the dogs, then Adam, then the Seditionaries oh, T-shirt. Yeah. What's the plan for the pub's first night's opening? Oh, in Bex Hill. Uh, I don't know. We 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 had such a, a random opening for the fountain. I mean, we didn't really know how we were going to go down. Really, um, we were closed. The clo the pub was closed for about seven weeks while we refurbished. Um, we had Julia DJing, and and I think Jeffrey came down. It was a, a bank holiday weekend. Um, we had a great mix of really cool locals. Uh, a good LGBT crowd, and then all the local um, people who lived in the vicinity of the fountain. And it, it well, you were there, Sue. It was it. just a kind of crazy three days. So I think I'd like to. I'd I, hope I invited everyone in Hastings. I'd hope that that, and a lot, a lot of people came from from London um, for the opening. So I think I'd like to hopefully, um, yeah, mimic that. And what about the first night of the um, fountain opening again? Uh, what's it? Uh, oh, restaurant. restaurant. David's asking hey, David. Um, so just as we were just before lockdown, the um, oh, we've got another dog coming in. Hi. Pit. That's Pit. Everyone. Say hi. Um. Just as uh, just before lockdown, we were just having the kitchen at the fountain finished. So um, yeah, so that was on hold, but we'll we'll pick up on that as as soon as uh, yeah, as soon as we're allowed to. So yeah, so I hear you'll build two lovely dining rooms upstairs. We have, yeah, yeah, very nice. I know. So yeah. I did have Christmas. I had two dinners there. So we had Christmas lunch that was lovely. We did, yeah. And then you had a thing for your parents when Nikki Davidson did the food. It was gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. And it looked very beautiful. Oh, yeah, another question I love. <laughs> what TV shows you? Um, well, I've, I've just finished um, season six of Shit's Creek. My favourite programme in the which world. Which I love, which I love. And I tell everyone to watch it if they haven't. Uh, um, yeah, I don't watch terrestrial TV. There's nothing on. Um, yeah. So Shit's Creek has been the main thing recently. I watched this new programme on um, Netflix. I finished it all in one day, but it was so terrible. I just sat there laughing out loud because it was so appalling. Oh, you told me about it. The um... Sweet Magnolias. It's like a hundred Christmas films all blurred into one, although it's not <laughs> It's though these women, you know, they've got a few problems. They've always got these handsome men just falling for them, left, right and centre. And the acting. I watched Hollywood as well. Oh, we're here. Are. Question for you about your vegan pie. Oh, I did. I loved it. Um, what, uh, it's gone. What was the question? <laughs> I loved it. Um, yeah, great for pies. Uh, you got one too. Oh, you're Claire. So, Claire, you live on Dane Road or you live somewhere else? Because, um, uh, what's her name? Leanne, Leanne came down and dropped off um, Me, these yeah. wonderful pies, these wonderful vegan pies from Farika, who has the cock in uh, Kennington. You got one, too. I did. Donald okay. got one. Uh, Sean Clarkson and Sheridan got one in the old town. Yeah, lovely, gorgeous. Are lovely. you a vegan? Uh, I'm not a vegan. What? I'm not vegan. Debbie, you want to know if you're a vegan? I'm not vegan. No, it's too much. I'm kind of. I'm not. I'm. 
it, I'm a politarian, is that, if that's a thing. What's that? I, I eat fish and I eat chicken, but I don't eat anything with four legs and a face. Oh. So no cows, no pigs, no lambs, but I do eat chicken. <laughs> You've only got two legs, haven't they? So they're all. Yeah. What about if. Oh, this is. David Sands asked me this. Nothing yes. Nothing about more than Mark's. Well, it's, it's in Bexhill, technically, but it's, but it's in. I've got. To, can I talk about. You know my love yeah. of Mark. Uh, let's do it handle the Marks and Spencer's uh, question. Well, there's one in Hastings. It's all right, but it's nope. a bit of a palaver, and it shuts at half past five or something ridiculous. Sorry, uh, everyone. Sorry, just sort myself getting, out. Getting his guns out. Get me if you drive 10 minutes from here to Bex, it is this side of Bexhill. It's practically in St. Leonard's, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is a marvellous Marks and Spencer's. It's the perfect size. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's got a lovely food hall. And it's got quite a good range of clothes as well. Mm. Because I'll give you a secret. And it has a lovely cafe favorite, overlooking the sea. Wayne's favourite fashion designer, Blue Harbour. <laughs> but the yeah, clothes secret. over there are nice. And they've got a bit of top beauty. And the food hall, it's never that busy. And in the lockdown, it's been a blessing. If you go there about seven and... There's no one in there. And everything's reduced with a yellow sticker. <laughs> so that but yeah, tell them about the um the cafe. Oh yeah, the cafe that overlooks the sea. It's the best Marks and Spencer's cafe in the country. To be honest, I should get some money from Marks and Spencer's the amount of time I spend promoting them. <laughs> and that branch in particular. Well, I remember that when we were I don't think I think we were still looking to buy flats. Yeah, we met you and um, Ian, Yvette, the Conqueror, <laughs> called just Yvette, who lives here. More evidence that this is the 80s by sea. Um, and me and, me and Adam walked into the cafe in Bexhill, Marks and Spencer's, and it was packed, and every single person had grey hair. It was a sea <laughs> of grey hair. And and we were literally the laughing before we got to the table. I know. And then the fancy, there's several fancy people there who are very keen on Marks and Spencer's Peruna line because yeah. they're a little bit cut above the other people. Oh. Yes, yeah. I've noticed. Sometimes you get them, they, you know, they're a little bit something, they've got a tiny bit quirky. Yeah. Oh. oh. Well, it's nice in New York. Are you in New York, Ian, or are you somewhere else? Is he in I New think York? He's, up, he's upstate. All right. So here, we're sending you now a way to send your pictures because nothing we love more than looking at the pictures. Um, what other excitements? Where are we? What else we can talk about? So what else are your plans for your pub for the future? Um, well, I think just getting them open will be, yeah. <laughs> will be nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I guess when we get the guidelines, what we have to do and stuff. So, yeah. Because with your pub, really, the way it's laid out, it's hard to spread all them people about in there, wouldn't it? I know. Really? We'll see. I mean, yeah. It's a political hot potato. I don't want to... <laughs> but, yeah, we'll see. Um, social distancing in pubs. It's it's going to be really tricky. I mean, pubs, nightclubs, whatever. It's, it's At some point, I guess, um, things are going to have to just open and people are going to have to make a call. People are going to say, well, I can't go there because I think, and people will go, well, I've had it or, you know, I don't care. <laughs> you know, people will, will make decisions and, but yeah, it's, it's going to be tricky, but um, we're really, we're really fortunate that we have the brewery behind us. So. Yeah, so I've got a fantastic question just came up, Wayne. What's your favourite flavour of Marks and Spencer's crisps? Um, jalapeno, what is it? Jalapeno one. I can't remember. Jalapeno and something. I can't remember. The other was go for plain, ready. Something. No, yeah, I like I like spicy. I like spicy. Oh, no, I don't like fake flavour. No, it's like a. <laughs> what? <What's laughs> Hi, Gaina. Oh, that's my lovely neighbour from. Uh, oh, she lives. She's yours from the found. Long Island, yeah. Oh, lucky you. Those were the days. Did you know Dave Little and Lenny Beige? 
Oh, I know Lenny Beige. Um, you know Lenny I don't Beige. know Dave Little. Dave Little, as in the graphics guy who did Boy's Own. Um, if that's Dave Little, then I kind of know him. But um, Lenny Beige, I kind of know ish. And yeah, we should get them. Everyone should come to the reopening. Yeah. yeah. Trying to get Fiona Bruce. What? To, oh, tell them the story of Fiona Bruce. So, yeah, so the pub in Bex Hill, um, when we went to view it, uh, the, uh, the, the the current landlord, or the landlords at the time, said um, that they'd had a, uh, that programme, Who Do You Think You Are, filming in there. And uh, basically the building, it's the pub, wasn't always a pub. It was a photographic studio, I think, in the at the turn of the century. And it was Fiona Bruce's great, great grandfather. And in the program, she's in the pub with a laptop looking at a picture of her grandfather's studio, which is why the pub has so amazing, such amazing big windows. Oh, which everyone funny. will see when we open. Oh, there we are. Was Bieber an inspiration? <laughs> Always. Um, well, yeah, I was a, I was a bit of a Bieber baby. My mum used to take me to Bieber. So, um, and when it shut, um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it was. It's kind of magical, Bieber. It's a bit of a Disney thing, I always think. And um, when when we took the fountain over, there was no um, Victorian um, references in the pub. Um, it all been stripped out in the kind of. 60s or 40s 50s um with many makeovers so there wasn't anything um yeah anything uh because it's 18 the pub i think it was 1858 so there was nothing of that period in the pub but what there were were some art deco references in um paneling and stuff so that's why we chose the bieber ripoff fountain <laughs> okay and I must say, you, your um, Instagram pictures and that are really funny. Does George do all that's that? That's George. That's not me. That's Gina. That's yeah, Gina. Now, so I don't know if you know George, who's the, was he the bar George manager? George is a wonderful, wonderful manager at the Fountain. Gina, I call him George, Gina. But yeah, he does the Instagram and everything. Yeah, they're always very I'm not good. really good at Instagram. I, I do my own, but not, I, I, you know, I don't do very much. Oh, I'm thrilled. My latest Instagram post got over 700 likes. <laughs> it was me recreated in ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Someone found it and sent it to me. Very bizarre. Um, well, what else of excitement? I could uh, tell Kevin um, Keevan a, a, a Barbara Hunaniki story. Yeah. Bieber. So, and Ian will know this. I went to Miami on, uh, I think it was 1998. 1999 New Year's Eve and um, at the Delano Hotel in Miami uh, a friend of ours Tallulah was DJing God rest her soul and um, yeah and it was a New Year's Eve party very VIP and at the back of the hotel there were bungalows and it was all very chic and um, I spotted Barbara and Niki and I was a bit drunk and started, like, started grabbing her going i used to go when i was there and anyway sort of hounded the poor woman and then um she was hanging out with kelvin klein <laughs> and i decided that i was hanging out with kelvin klein and barbara and Niki. and until we got to some bungalow of theirs and the security just went pushed me out of the way but anyway oh and, uh, oh they and, uh, should in, shouldn't they huh they should have taken any other. So remember to send your pictures to Isolation Station Hastings. I think I might have just got one from Donald on my phone. Let me check. Oh no, he put it on Facebook, I think. But um, so yeah. well, so we've only got five and more minutes of drawing. Then we'll have a look at some of the pictures. So I'm very no. excited. Five more minutes of drawing. Okay. Hopefully we see some pictures if they're coming in, sure. which I hope they are. Very exciting. Want to chat about the art? Oh, what, the art in your flat? Mm. 
Okay. Then well, I normally have you, but I didn't think it was appropriate. So I moved you. I, I moved you aside. So okay. sorry. What other art have you got up there? Then? We got a lovely Julie Verhoeven up there. Yeah. That one. Yeah. And um, Harlan Miller. That one. That one. Yeah. Another one of my old neighbours. Harland. Yeah, he used to live about on the corner of Mornington Crescent. Oh, did he? Oh, with Adam used to live above his studio. That's how we've got. I go that, there. That one. <laughs> a very bizarre. He used to go to my gym, but he never worked out. And I go, well, what are you doing? He goes, oh, well, my bathroom is being done up, so I just joined to use the bathroom and the showers. <laughs> but he had a whole family, so I don't know if they all went in there or what. But that bathroom seemed to be broken forever because he was always in there using the shower facilities. Now, so we've got five. Any more fa fantastic questions you feel you need to ask Wayne? Number one, Wayne, what's your favourite cocktail? That's out of my Twinkle. Head. Explain to people what a twinkle is. A twinkle, Paul Hoy turned me on to a twinkle. A twinkle is vodka, elderflower cordial and Prosecco. Oh, it's a bit strong and a bit sweet, isn't it? It's very nice. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, well, good. Oh. You can follow her. Rich, I, will. I will. You wouldn't let me in. You wouldn't let me into the room. Loved you and Ginger, Sue. What? Oh. That was the picture I put on Instagram. It was hilarious. I like the quick fire questions. Cocktail, go. What's next? Okay, then. What's your favourite food, Wayne? My favourite food? Oh, my favourite food is uh, chicken and chips. <laughs> What's the first person you will hug after lockdown besides Adam? Because you're living with him. Well, um, first person. You. Oh, thanks. Even though you don't like being touched. <laughs> I know it's been a blessing for you. You don't like a hug. I don't mind. Stop touching me. I don't mind. Depends. You and Julia, you don't really, no. you're not you very tactile. Like when people sit and stroke me. <laughs> and people do. I don't like that. <laughs> but a hug, I can, as long as it doesn't go on too long, I can bear it. And it's the kissing that I get embarrassed. You know when you're leaving? Do you kiss once? Do you kiss twice? Do you shake hands? Do you say goodbye? What do you do? <laughs> I just run out. It's the best one. Yeah, I give you a hug. Thanks. That'll be lovely. Your favourite song? Oh, my favourite song. Um, uh, 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 Baby, it's you. The Beatles. Your favourite toy as a child? Um, favourite toy as a child? Um, uh, uh, Bionic Man. <gasps> doll. Your favourite place to visit? Uh, favourite Canberra Sands. Oh, is it? In the whole world? Right, mm. this finishes. And someone says, here's a million pounds. You can go wherever you want. Would you go to Canberra Sands? What? When this what? When what finishes? Lockdown. Goes here, I'll wait. Is you go anywhere in the world after lockdown. Um, no, I'll probably go to... I, I love New York as well. So New York. Yeah. If it's a city, I love... Yeah. New York is, yeah, my favourite city other than London. But I wouldn't go to London after lockdown. Um, I like Miami as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've only been there once, but I thoroughly had a lovely time. I really did enjoy it. I'd like to go. I went to Key West. Your favourite book? Favourite book? I don't read a lot. I don't read a lot. Um, I don't say it, Wayne, but I thought it. I don't I read a lot. It. Yours? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I was going to say, say my book. Yeah. It is available on Kindle, everyone. I was going to say, I'm, I'm, I quite like it on an audio book. Can you do an audio book version? <laughs> have to ask Sophie Lynn. She organised Yeah, but let's ask Sophie. Sophie, Sophie Lynn, if you're watching, you're get, watching, get an audio book version of Sue Tilly's book. Oh, imagine my voice, read, my horrible voice reading out like that. Oh, Dina Corey says Bournemouth is the best book. Well, we've got about two seconds. Oh. So I hope Katie has got some lovely pictures to show us. Oh, I hope so. Yes. I'm really big in this position. I've lost weight over the... Um, well, perhaps it's the lack of the beer, Wayne. Uh, probably, probably. Away from the beer. I'm very impressed with my haircut. Nice. What's your favourite beer? Um, Moretti. We sell, sell it? it at the pub. Yeah. Oh, I don't really like beer. On a hot no. day, a shandy's all right. Mm. A bitter shandy, though, not a lager shandy. You don't sell bitter, do you? Bitter? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we have it on draft. 
Oh. When I went, it wasn't proper bitter. It was something different. But it was all right. I don't know. I don't know. You know that, well, that, that's George's. Oh, someone's WhatsApp their picture. Oh, Anthony Duckles has been in the sea today in Worthing. Have you been in yet this year? No. No, no I'm too scared. It's, it's cold. Got be, it's got to be really, really hot for me to go in there. And I don't well, think we've been in together, to... me, you and Rachel. I know. But I don't think the sun's been hot enough to heat the sea up for me yet because I'm a sissy. And I like to lie mm. on the beach afterwards and dry off. It's very hot out today, though. It's lovely I out know. there. Been out for 10 minutes, half hour, sunbathing mm. already in my sun. Oh, oh that's good. I like that. Shout out. Can you tell us who did Who's that? I think we won't find out till after. I can't recognize them. Very cool. Nice, nice. good one. I think that might be Jennifer Corker. And it's oh. on court. So that might, and then she embroiders them. Oh, oh that's nice. Oh, nice. Your pink fashion club. Fashion club. I like that. Oh, oh that looks like I like that. Yeah. Very good. They're all oh, wow. Wow. I could sell that one to my mother. Stone. Lovely. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. Why it looks just like you. <laughs> Is that David Brazier? I don't know. Is there any more? He's always good at abstract. Yeah. I've got some coming into mind, so we'll put them all up. So send them to Isolation Station Hastings and then they'll be up probably later this evening because Katie does it and she's ever so busy, mm. bless her. You love really Katie and Dan. Thank you. You've done oh, no. so well with 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 the lockdown, entertaining people. Oh, no. I mean, they were very entertaining before anyway. Dan and Katie are, are local heroes. Um, they are. I worked with Katie on um, uh, Fat Tuesday and Dan's always in the pub and yeah, they're really lovely people and they are. yeah, and it's yeah, I love what they've done. Well done, guys. And when um, the pub opens, I'll probably do my art class there because I was so Brilliant. excited about doing my art class. We're all going. We're all ready, weren't we? We're going to have loads. Yeah. Of we were doing afternoons and evenings. We had it all planned, and then this happened. So as soon as it's back on, we can do it live. Because although I like doing this, what I really I like, like this. I think I think you should. I think yeah. maybe you should do this like once a month. Yeah, but for all I, the people that can't come to you in at the fountain. But what I love is talking to people while they're doing it and mm -hmm. looking around and seeing how the pictures are coming on. So although this is great, it is better when it's I'm there with all the people and it's nice to talk to them because it's more a social club as well as an art club. It, it was. It's very, yeah. And all those people that, that you know, come back to the fountain. and We've made lots of friends and, oh, it's it, been lovely. So next week, everyone, before you go, I will tell you our model will be Jackie O'Sullivan. <laughs> I love Jackie. Yeah, she was in Banana Armour. You know the one when... Um, She's, She's a lovely she was girl. also in the Shillelagh Sisters. I love, love, love the Shillelagh Sisters. And now she's a yoga teacher and she travels to Thailand and that. And now she's doing um, online yoga classes. So she's, she's been to the fountain. Yeah, she has been to the fountain. She's our model next week. And I don't know if Kath Parr is doing it. She does sometimes do this. And I knew Kath and I knew Shiva, um Jackie, they didn't know each other. And then they found out they were cousins in some bizarre way and met up. It was kind of weird because I knew them both, but I didn't know each other. So I don't know if Kath's watching today. Oh, oh thank you, She's going to sew it. Thank oh, aren't the people lovely? Oh, thank you. Oh, 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 Debbie. You must keep doing it. Oh, yes, you've got to keep doing it. it. We like, could stream it from the pub. Hi, Paul Heron. Hey, Trindy. Oh. Uh, Oh, no, where's no Oh, Norman's Bay is not far, is it? It's near Pevensey Beach. Because my friend's got a caravan there, Louise Court. Right, so thank you so much, Wayne. That was thank so Thank you lovely. for inviting me. And then we can discuss the pictures after. It's yeah. brilliant. Bye. I'll see you when you walk past. I was going to say bye. Bye, doggy. Yeah. Does Adam want to come and wave goodbye? Adam did the studio. Oh, playing, playing his games. Bye.